Are you ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! Terrific crowd. Hey, we have a fantastic crowd. How are y'all doing tonight? Hey, welcome all across America. We have a great crowd here tonight. This is probably the best audience we've had in months. I'll tell you, it's great. Johnny Carson, eat your heart out. Johnny Carson would give his left arm to have an audience like I have. Right. Okay. Now we have some we have some ludicrous people on the show tonight. We have a guy named Chris Coben who is who is against Nancy Reagan. This maniac says that Ronald Reagan is not running the country. Nancy's running the country. <laughs> then I have another idiot. His name is Rick Schooler, and he has an organization called HATE, H-A-T-E. It's H-A-T-E, which stands for Humans Against Television Evangelists. <laughs> And then we have a ludicrous nightclub comic. I've seen his act. He uses nothing but dirty, filthy words. And I say he hasn't got enough talent to get laughs without being dirty. And he says he can. So he's going to come on here and try to get laughs being clean. And I say he'll never be able to do it, right? And now, before we get into my opening commentary, it's time to meet our great crew. In the booth, of course, the bombastic one, the amazing Brian Lockwood in the booth. And on the floor, our great floor director, the amazing Pat Rondo. And the prettiest producer on television, Paige Poliquin. <laughs> and of course, my good friend, the one, the only, David Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, oh, running yeah. against you. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get any glasses. What happened? Hold it down, everybody. Just hold it down. It's time for my opening commentary, and then we'll get on with our, with our, our guests. I am really appalled over the most recent Supreme Court decision backing job preference for women. Now, I, that's terrible, isn't it? Now, now the ruling means, hold it. The ruling means that an employer may promote a woman over a man, even if the man is better qualified than the woman. Oh, and they say that they're doing this to remedy a statistical imbalance in the workforce. No. Baloney. Oh. Now, do you understand what that means? That means an employer, let me repeat that, an, em an employer may hire a woman over a man even if the man is better qualified for the job. Now, 
Now the woman gets the, now the woman gets the job just because she is a woman, not because she's the best qualified. Now wait. Let me ask you. Hey, does that sound fair to you? Now this this is this is affirmative action at its worst, and I say it is discriminating against men. I say a person should get a job because he or she is the best qualified for the job. I don't care if it's a man, if it's a woman, if, if the person's black, white, yellow, polka dot, whatever. You don't give a job to a woman just because she is a woman. That's a rotten, disgusting decision made by the Supreme Court. And I want to see a constitutional amendment. I want to see, right now, the President of the United States initiate action in Congress and the Senate to overrule that Supreme Court decision. I'll be right back. Get that sign up there, the Wally for Mayor sign up there. Give me that sign. There, that's here out there. Yeah. Okay. And the Caltech sign, terrific. Hey, David, uh, uh, do you have anything to say about my opening commentary? Yeah, reverse discrimination is rampant in this country. The worst thing to be now is a white male heterosexual. You're you right. got nothing going for you. You're right. It. I mean, how could, how could those people? How could those people on the Supreme Court, I thought we had a conservative court now, how could they possibly vote for this stupid ruling? I think it's something like 16 out of their first uh, 26 cases have been on the liberal side. Well, these guys are, they're ludicrous. Okay. okay. Now it's time for the mailbag. The mailbag, let's go. Okay, here's a letter from a girl named Virginia. You guys are not going to like this. Uh, what do you hear what this jerkette has to say? She says, to Wally George. She's very formal. Okay, yeah. Very formal. So far, yeah. She said, I want you to know, Mr. George, I used to watch your show, but no longer. I bet you'll watch this one. She, I cannot stand your rude, noisy studio audience. How dare you insult my great audience? Hey, Virginia, you say you can't stand my audience? We can't stand you, Virginia. And Virginia, you will never be a member of this audience, right? Now here, here is a here's a re, hold it here's a real mental case right here David. He even signs his name John. Okay. And, and this is the way he starts his brilliant letter. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Maybe that's the only word he, he says. Can I heard you're going to run for mayor of Los Angeles. He says. What a joke that is. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, John. <laughs> all, okay. all together now. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Very good, Wally. <laughs> okay. Now, great way to end it. Here's one. This is, from a great, this is a good one now, David. Okay. This is a good one from a girl named Amy. I always loved the name Amy. Yeah, that was and Jimmy Carter's daughter. I oh, I hate the name Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Wally, my name is Amy. 
I watch you every day, and I say, people who don't agree with what you say should be kicked out of America. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, now, hold on. We have a, a very nice presentation to be made to me here tonight by a, a very fine young gentleman. His name is Kerry Long. Let's bring Kerry on with a nice round of applause. Come on, Kerry. Okay, Kerry, it, it's very nice of you to come down, and I, I understand that you're making me a, a very fantastic presentation, and if you, you can get a shot of it, uh, can you describe what we have here, Kerry? Okay, what you have there is 100% genuine bronze, and as you know, that's a very rare statue. <laughs> And uh, I felt, well, at least we felt at our foundry, which is located in Burbank, California. What's the name of your company? Sun Foundry. Sun Foundry right. in, in where? Yeah. Burbank, California. <laughs> and, and you brought this down for me? I, we, we decided at our foundry that this is something you need to have in your studio. How much is this, is this worth? $1,500. Hey, 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 Too much for you guys. He just told us, 1500 bucks. How about that? But, uh, but I, just, I just wanted to say that uh, we at our foundry thought you were such a true blue American that you needed a, a symbol of our, of our country, well, which Kerry, is the eagle. And, and your company is, is again what now? Sun Foundry. Sun Foundry right. in yeah. Burbank, California. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're Give welcome. a nice round of applause. I want to know what you think of the advertisement of... What's your name first? Fred Beatty. Yes, Fred. Yeah. I, want, I, want to know, yeah. I want to know what you think of the advertisements of condoms on television. Well, I say, you know, what, when you have television... Yeah. In your, when you have television in your front room, I'm sick and tired of seeing Trojan condoms advertised. I'm sick... Yeah. Sick and tired of all these feminine hygiene ads, to tell you the truth. That's the answer. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, my name's Tim Higdon, yes, Tim. and uh, I was I was wondering what what are your views on uh, the spy scandals about the Marine Corps and the pol and the possible abolishment of the Marine Corps. Well, there's not going to be an abolishment of the Marine Corps. These are only a few guys over there in the uh, uh, embassy in Russia that were caught spying, and they are a disgrace to the Marines. And I say they should take these Marines, put them against the wall, and shoot them. <laughs> Nothing worse than there's nothing worse than treason. Okay. Hi, I'm Richard Stead from Pasadena. I wanted to hear I wanted to hear your reaction to Platoon winning Best Picture. Well, that was another political statement. There, I have seen a screening of Platoon. And I have talked to many Vietnam veterans, and I'll tell you, that picture portrays our Vietnam vets, the guys over there as druggies, as heartless, cruel, idiot, <laughs> and I say, when Platoon won the Oscar, the happiest person alive was Jane Fonda. Yeah. <laughs> It's great to have you all here tonight. Let's hold it. All right, now we're going to get to our first guest in a moment. I want to remind you people here in Southern California, uh, join me every day, Monday through Friday at 4.30 for the Hot Seat Hotline, where you can call me on the phone every day, Monday through Friday, and uh, ask questions on television. So join me here, Channel 56, Monday through Friday for the Hot Seat Hotline. And now, let's hold it down, the whistler, or you're out of here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And now, David, our first guest on the hot seat, okay. please. Okay, first up tonight, we have Rick Schooler, who is the president and founder of an organization called HATE. And guess what that stands what for stand now? For? Humans of HATE. Against... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that too, yeah. 
They caught on right away. It's obvious. Humans against television evangelists. Humans against television evangelists. I don't yeah. see how you. Hate. I don't see how you can be the head. I don't see how you can get an audience that can't spell. You know, hate oh. doesn't spell. Oh. Down. How can he be the head of an organization called Humans Against Television Evangelists? He doesn't even look like a human. Wally. Hold it, hold it. Wally, Wally. Hold it, hold it. Wally, in December, I came here. We did a show on the same subject. Now that the Baker controversy is out, hold it. Now that the Baker controversy is out, the truth is out. We know these people are nothing but perverts and drug abusing floozy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. That are using donated money to finance their sexual fantasies and support their drug habits. Wait a minute, pal. Before you talk about their sexual fantasies, let's talk about his sexual fantasy. Because, hey, take a look at him. Take a look at him. The only, hey, the only sex he ever would have would be a fantasy. <laughs> You guys want to jump on Jim Baker because he admits. I don't want to jump on Jim Baker. You might want to jump on Jim Baker. <laughs> wait, you probably wait do. a minute. Now, wait a minute. You consider yourself, I hope, to be uh, a, a Christian-like type person, right? I think I am. Yes. Okay, then. Everybody is entitled to one mistake. Jim That's Baker, right. hey, Jim Baker, they have scanned his entire lifetime and career. They found that one time. No, they, no. Wait a minute. Wait till I finish, Big Mouth. All right. <laughs> they found that one time, zero, one time, he committed an act of adultery. He, co he confessed his adultery to his wife. She forgave him. He confessed it to God. He thinks God has forgiven him, and I do too. Then why did he have to pay $150,000 to keep this lady's mouth shut? Well, wait. Now, wait a minute. A Christian, if a Christian sins, then if wait, he uh, tells the truth, he then he is forgiven. He did tell but the truth. God doesn't say, pay the lady off, and wait then if it comes up, then you'll he be forgiven. He didn't have to, wait, he didn't have to confess He's at all. He's a crook. He's not a crook. He's a crook. I say that even Jim Baker deserves a second chance. Don't you think so? Rick. Rick. Rick, let's assume, let's assume for, for the moment that what he did was, was wrong and so forth, and your accusations are correct. I'm not admitting that, but let's say that he, they are. Mm -hmm. So you condemn all TV evangelists? Well, I've got, other, I've, things, I've, I've got other things on other evangelists. A few dozen Major League Baseball players are on drugs. You say every one of them should be banned? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Let me tell you this. There, there are a couple of rotten apples in every type of business and organization. Yeah, you're one of them in the television industry. Hey, wait. Oh. games with me pal uh, listen but you 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 and the tell you and the television evangelists have a lot in common listen let's oh, yeah. face it All right. you know why because you're nothing but a bag of hot air wrapped up in hollywood hype and it's somebody that cares about nothing but money and ratings go after I fry him a little more on the hot seat. Now you see, what you're, what you're trying to do, you little nitwit, you are... Hey, and from, the, and from the way he's dressed, he doesn't belong... Hey, 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 wait a minute. He doesn't 
doesn't belong on this podium the way he's dressed. He belongs in the circus. What do you think? That's original, Wally. Let's talk, let's talk about KDOC's no, 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 own Gene on, just, Scott. Hold let's on a minute, pal. On, I'm, I'm asking the questions. You're answering. Well, you're asking stupid yeah. questions. I'm telling you good I, answers. I'm asking the questions. Here's, the, here's, the, here's what it is. You guys and the people in the news media have jumped on this Jim Baker thing, trying to blow it all, all out of proportion, trying to get all these TV evangelists off the air. That's there are right. many very good people. Well, who let's are, weed out the bad ones then. Let's get them out of here. There are many very, very good preachers like Billy Graham and... Uh, uh. <laughs> What do you see wrong with, with Billy Graham? I, I, I don't see anything good. I don't see anything good with anybody that takes people's money and makes money off the Lord. Wait a minute, how are they going to pay their expenses to go on television? How are they going to spend their money on these Cadillacs and big homes? They're making money off God. God was not here to make money off of. Have you? Have you seen any of have you seen any extravagance that Billy Graham has gone to? Billy Graham, don't watch name Billy one. Graham. I am not. Well, then I'm don't not condemn him. Say, then don't condemn him. Billy Graham is is one of the best, honest men in the business. Okay, we'll let we'll let him go. All right, and and what about? Hold on. How about Robert Schuller? Oh, what, what's, what's wrong with him? You can see you can see the lies in that guy's eyes. Oh I mean, come on! This guy looks the most dishonest of them all. He looks oh, dishonest. Oh, you know. Do you know, do you know how much money? He says he yeah. he says Robert Schuler looks dishonest. He is. He's yeah, dishonest. He does. Hey, hey, hey. This, yeah, thank you. He, he looks dishonest. Look at this guy's face. What does he look like? Wally, 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 ministers do not need to make millions of dollars in personal income. Jim Baker and Tammy are getting $180,000 a year now, and they're not even going to be on the show anymore. The, the Why should they get $200,000 for not being on the show? Okay, now, now Because they need to support the Palm Springs home, the North Carolina to, home. They don't want to lose their little amusement park down there that's making millions of dollars hey, tax-free because it's from the church. I would rather, hey, I would rather have them go to that Christian amusement park that they built than to some porno house. How about you? <laughs> There at, least, nothing, at least porno houses pay taxes. There's nothing wrong with a religiously oriented amusement park. There isn't. There isn't. And I agree with you. So then what's but wrong? where are the profits from that going? You see, it's you going guys, right in Jim and Tammy Baker's pocket. You guys so are, they can go out to the massage parlors and pick up their prostitutes. And Tammy can sit home and take Valiums all night long. That's the only yeah, reason. Wait, they're wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nobody said, nobody, nobody. She admitted an eight-year drug addiction. To, How did she pay for those prescription drugs? prescription drugs. So what? Is there any difference between cocaine and Valium? There is isn't. No. All right, all right. Oh, you know? Yeah, you know. This guy, yeah. I say by trashing these evangelists, it's another move by jerks like you uh. to kill God in America. What do you no, think? No, no, no. no, no. You're killing God. No, I said it. These evangelists are killing God by exploiting God for their own profit. They're not doing it for their own profit. Oh, do you have uh, any idea? Do you think these people would be up there doing what they do if they weren't making that much There's money? There's nothing wrong with Would you be behind that disc if you weren't making money? No, yeah, you wouldn't. Of course wouldn't. I would. Oh, come on. Don't lie to us. If I hate it for nothing. Hey, if I were a multimillionaire, I would come down here and do it for free because I know I'm doing something good for my country. Yeah. Now, I say this. I say this. These guys, you keep talking about money, money, money. You have no idea the amount of money these preachers must pay to buy airtime across America. That's very true. They you are said paying... that the last time. I don't want to listen to it again. Well, you're paying. Hey, I don't want to listen to it. You're going to 
listen to it again. Hey, it's a rerun. Do Let's you know do something original. Ninety-five percent of the money that television evangelists take in goes to paying for airtime, and I say, okay, fine, we got that part. <laughs> Okay, Jimmy Swaggart brought in $154 million in 1985. Five percent of that is going where? In his pocket. Going to all, how do you know? You're taking, you're taking all kinds of. Well, do these people want to put out their personal tax audits? No, they don't. Why? Because they don't want their audience to know how much money they're taking. You're a liar again? No. Be because Jim, liar, hold on. Liar, 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 liar. Hey, hold on. Jim Baker, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, all of them. A bunch of lunatics. They went on television and volunteered to turn over their tax returns. Not their, they're not personal. Their, no. They're personal. No, they did not. They You're a liar. No. You're a dirty liar. I'll be right back. Welcome back, I'm Wally George, and this is the Hot Seat Show, and the only show to watch every Saturday night at 11 o'clock. Tell your friends, this is it, right? Yeah! Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, now our guest is, is Rick Schooler of Hate, Humans Against Television Evangelists. Now, you see, as I said before, that this is just another way of killing God in, in America. We, you guys would love to see all the evangelists off the air, and I say they're filling a need. Some people can't go to church. They're filling a need to put money in their pocketbooks is what they're doing. Oh, that's all you say with that stupid mouth of yours. Because that's keep... all they're doing. Let's, let, look, let's look at Oral Roberts. Can you believe now, what he has done? Now, there is one person that I is condemn. God, do you believe that God I, is going to take his life if no. you don't send him $8 million? I, that's the one person I, I don't believe in. You're well, right you guys on, are a lot smarter than him. I'd rather talk to you. Uh, guys. Uh, hey, that's the one person that, that I think made a very drastic mistake in saying that. He did. But, and he discredited the Lord. And, that, and if you notice in the paper that the... Re the revenue coming in now is dropping, dropping more and more because people are giving up on these evangelists because they know what well, they are Well, obviously, now. your revenue has dropped down to nothing. Look how he's dressed. Yeah! Hold on. Let, let me mention to you, once again, let me, let me mention to you, it just kills me the way the media just jumps on somebody like Jim Baker and bashes into the ground like you. If Jesus Christ were here himself today, I feel convinced he would look at Jim Baker and say, I accept your apology. Go and sin no more. Right? Let's talk, let's talk, about, some more of these, let's talk about some more of these lunatics. KDOC's own little Don't Gene Scott. Don't talk about the things that I'm on here. Gene Scott, he buys this church. He's seven million dollars in debt. What is he going to do? Wait what does he do with it? All of a sudden he goes. How do you know how much in debt well, he is? What's on the news? He's seven million dollars in debt. I don't put anything in the news. Do you? Uh, seven million. Wait a minute. Gene Scott is not. Seven million you're, dollars. You're in a debt. liar. He is not seven million dollars in he debt. He was seven million dollars behind in payments on that church. He had no way out of it. So what did he do? He thought, up, let's make it a historical. You don't know landmark. what you're talking about. Oh, that's exactly what he did. You are out of your stupid mind. Oh. You don't know what you're talking about. Gene Scott, Gene Scott is not $7 million in he debt. Was $7 million in he debt. He did not pay on the payments for that church. That's all. Okay, well, that's bad enough. But he that had the money. Dollars. No, no. Oh, he had the money? Is that why he wanted to uh, make it a historical landmark, right? Listen, Gene Scott... You will not trash him. I like him. He's a, he's, you look a lot alike, that's for sure. Oh. Go ahead, David. Rick, Rick, are you saying that this huge percentage of the American public are idiots who yep. send in all of this money to these people? Well, Don't you think is, they man. know where it's going and what and what it's being used for, and they're happy with that? No, because they're see, all a bunch of idiots, no, millions people, of people. No, they're people. Just you are smart. No, no, no. Society, the society has a lot of problems. Okay, but these people are faith starved. Whatever they can do to have that faith. Faith is great, religion is great, but religion wasn't made to have to be paid for. 
It's but the free. media, the Only media. Religion is free. It's not to be paid for. Only the, members of hate the, know what's going on. The media is making making a circus out of this whole event. I'm saying. Who's making it? The who media it? and people like no, you. Who started it? Who brought up all this stuff about Jim Baker? You, Other you, evangelists. You, because right. they want to take wait, over how many, the PTL. How many Why? Sins, wait a minute. How many sins have you committed in That's your life? The yeah. huh? first one was coming on this show. <laughs> The only sin I've made is coming on this show, Wally. Hey, the biggest sin I ever committed, I'll confess right now, the biggest sin I ever committed was having this jerk on my program. And now, and now I'm going to ask for forgiveness for that sin by kicking him out of here. Idiots like him we don't need. I say everybody, even a television preacher, deserves another chance. I'll be right back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is the Hot Seat Show, and we'll get on with our next victim. But first, I want to tell you, you know, the news media is really, really getting on these preachers, not because they want to help anybody, but they want to sell magazines. Here on, on the front cover of a recent Time magazine, there's Jimmy Swaggart and Jim and Tammy Baker, and they call it the unholy war. They, they aren't trying to help anybody. They're trying to sell Lousy magazines. Come on. What do you think? Okay, now, now I want to tell you something. If you'd like to uh, to write to me, I love to get your letters. I read every letter I get, and I answer every one. So write to me. Love to hear from you. Maybe some of you out there would like to challenge me on the hot seat sometime. Whatever your reason for writing, I read every letter. I answer every one. So let me hear from you. The address is just Wally George, hot seat, P.O. Box 56 TV, Anaheim, California, 92803. If you want an autographed picture, personally autographed, I'll send it out to you free. It's Wally George, P.O. Box 56 TV. Anaheim, California, 92803. Now, every Wednesday night, we tape our show. Hold it. Every Wednesday night, we tape our show down here in Anaheim for Saturday night. And if you'd like to come down some Wednesday evening about 6.30, you can call the numbers on your screen any day, Monday through Friday, uh, and we'll get you down here. Leave your name, your telephone number, and how many tickets you want. Here are the numbers to call Monday through Friday from 8.30 until 6. In the 213 area code, call 464-611. And here we go, gang. Here we go. In the 714 area code, call 999. 999. 9000. Here we go. 999. 9000. 999. 9000. There we go. Get my workout there. Every exercise. All the way to Florida. I finally got some exercise. Yeah. Okay. Now, David, it's time for our next guest on the hot seat. Right, next up tonight, we have Charles Coben, Chris who is here, Chris Coben, who is here to criticize the role Nancy Reagan is playing in the White House. Oh, come on. Now, listen, uh, uh, Chris, first of all, I find it despicable that you will pick on and bash one of the greatest first ladies in our history, Nancy Reagan. <laughs> You're talking about picking on and bashing somebody? Yeah, Are you kidding? I, I mean, you idiots. I, I mean, you're not you're not content just to try to smear and malign our great president. Now you want to pick on the first lady as well. Why are you doing that? It's very simple. Our government is based on elections. It's very simple. Like, hey, it's very simple. Like his mind, right? No. What? Are you, hold it now. Whenever you're ready. What do you have against Nancy Reagan? Nancy Reagan's running our country. It's not her fault. It's because we have a weak president. Oh. Our country... Oh. 
our country is being run by a woman who's a, a cross between a Stepford wife and Attila the Hun. Oh. oh. Hey, I have news for you. I have news. Everybody who knows anything in Washington, D.C. is saying right now to the press and everybody else, anybody who knows Nancy Reagan is saying Nancy never has, never will be in charge of the White House. Why don't you tell that to Donald Reagan? Why don't you tell that to Jim Watt? Why don't you tell that to everybody else she's oh. gotten rid of because they hung up on her or didn't smile at her or bow towards her? She... She did not get rid of them. The President of the United States did what he felt was right. Our President has let control of this country slip to his wife. It's very simple. It's very embarrassing. I'm sure you've seen the news clip where the press is asking him about uh, how are things going in the White House right now, and he was standing there with his, with his head swaying back and forth as usual. And you see Nancy. Nancy's going, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And of course, Ronnie comes up, everything's fine. Our country's being run by a ventriloquist. Oh, now listen. It's very simple. Nancy, Nancy Reagan, oh, Nancy Reagan is doing nothing more than being a good and loyal wife to her husband. Let's look at how loyal she's been. The first thing she did when she moves into the White House during the worst recession we've ever had is redecorate their bedroom with ten thousand dollars worth of Chinese eighteenth-century no, handcraft. No, no, hold, hold on, pal. Right? Hold on. It's the worst press wait, ever. Wait a minute. That's not for her. That that stays in the White House for presidents to come for hundreds of years. Well, that'll now. feed people in the ghetto, won't it? That's real public service. I'm telling you, she did nothing to enrich herself. She only talk about Jackie Kennedy. Hold it. When Jackie Kennedy was first lady, she spent 18 times as much as Nancy Reagan ever did. Am I right? Yeah. Why don't you pick on Jackie Kennedy? I'm she not here really to defend went, Jack. She went wild when she became first. They spent trillions of dollars redecorating the whole White House. I don't blame you for wanting to change the subject, but let's talk about Nancy Reagan, okay? She... Nancy Reagan has interfered with our foreign policy. She's interfered with our domestic policy. Hi. She's managed to even alienate women because she looked... All she, her, all she can do is stand there and stare at Ronnie Reagan. That's all she can do. She has no well, interest. Well, you don't have to she worry about no that. no personality. You, you don't have no to... No intelligence. Wait, wait a minute. You don't have to, happen to, to have that same problem when you get married. Your wife will never stand staring at you. She'll get sick to her stomach. Every man, every man in America who, who takes shots at Nancy Reagan is only doing so because they're jealous. They wish they had a woman like Nancy Reagan. not. As I said before, I'm not taking shots at Nancy Reagan. She's going for the power and she's getting it. My beef is with Ronald Reagan, who's supposed to be running this country. What if the Soviets send some nuclear weapons? What if the Soviets send nuclear weapons over here and Nancy's out getting a facelift or a nail job like she usually oh. is? Reagan's going to have to make the decision himself. And he's not equipped to do that. Ronald Reagan is making every decision. Howard Baker, the new chief of staff, says that Nancy Reagan never gets involved in policy making discussions so you and I believe Howard Baker not this little nitwit how about you in New why do I why do I feel I should have brought raw meat with me Chris yeah. Yeah. Chris yeah, Chris you're kind of you're kind of young to know this, so I don't expect you to. But you're just mouthing an old criticism. Uh, Rosalind Carter, uh, Lady Bird Johnson, Eleanor Roosevelt, all have been criticized for running their husbands That's and right. running the government. This is not a new accusation. And, and but but and, nothing. Nancy Reagan. Everybody who knows Nancy Reagan has said to the press in Newsweek and Time just the other week. Everybody who knows Nancy Reagan says she's behaving exactly as she has. When when she first married Ronald Reagan. She has said time after time her primary goal is to protect her husband, and I say there's nothing wrong with that. 
she the was problem the... is not that that's her primary goal. Yeah, that it's that she has goal. nothing else going on in her life. Look at the family she raised. She's got a, a guy that's a ballerina, little Ronnie. She's got a daughter that's a loudmouth who keeps getting her husband in trouble. She's failed with her family. She's failing at running the country, and she's a serious impediment to world progress. And your mother is... She's a nut. Don't talk mother... about my mother, pal. And your mother don't is you a... talk about Wait. my mother. And your... This oh, may my be your God. show, but don't you talk about my mother. I, I'm saying... You talk about, hey, you talk about Nancy Reagan as a mother, your mother. Don't you talk about my I'm mother. I'm saying your mother, is, your mother is the mother of a blithering idiot. And you're out of here. No. say this I say this I will not have this little moron take on a great lady like Nancy Reagan and and I'll tell you this every man not only a president any man would be proud to have a woman like Nancy as his wife I'll be right back Thank you very much. Oh, 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 all right, all right, all right, all right. Not yet, not yet. Okay, well, we got a comic coming on. Yeah, okay, now before we, we get to our final guest on tonight's hot seat show, every Saturday night you should be here at 11 p.m. and tell your friends Channel 56 or whatever channel you're watching us on. Before we bring on our final guest, I want to remind you people here in Southern California to join me every Monday night on KLAC Radio. It's a great radio station. It's the number one country music station. And on Monday nights, I do a talk show for three hours, the Wally George Great American Radio Show from 7 until 10 p.m. Every Monday night, you can call me on the phone for three hours. That's KLAC 57 on the AM dial every Monday night, huh? From 7 to 10. Okay. Now, David, our final, our final guest on the hot seat. Let's go. Okay, last up tonight, we have comedian Jeff Wayne, who has appeared... Oh, wait a minute. Who has appeared on HBO, Showtime, a regular at the Comedy Store in Hollywood, and appears every Thursday night at the Lamp Post Pizza in West Covina. Jeff Wayne. <laughs> Jeff Wayne. <laughs> You got him laughing already. Okay. okay. Uh, now, Jeff. Started. Wally, first let me say, that, okay. that is a beautiful statue. The bird. Yes, I knew eventually somebody would give you the bird. Oh. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, this guy claims to be a comedian. Can you believe it? No. <laughs> Now, Jeff, hold on. Yes, our, Wally. Our time is flying by here. I can tell, Wally. I, I want you to know that I object to comments like you. I've seen your act. You you pepper your routine with lots of, of dirty words. You tell, yeah, dirty words. Yeah. What kind of dirty words are you talking about, Wally? I can't say them on the air. What, 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 what words specifically? You know what I'm talking about. Which word, A Wally? lot of words. What's that? Like the F word, for example. <laughs> What, what F word do you mean? Now, now don't try to pull that on me. I, I'm telling you, you the, hey, hey, when it, come, when it comes to him, F means freak all, right? Hey, God, tell your crowd to F off, would you? I'm saying this, I'm saying, I'm saying this, Jeff. You guys have no talent because if you had talent, you wouldn't have to resort to dirt and filth to get less. Am I right? Well, Wally, I think you're right. Because if I had talent, I wouldn't be here right now. Let me tell you that. I don't think... We'll, we only have two minutes left. I don't think, Jeff, that you could get laughs if you told clean jokes. Do you think so? Now... Oh, I, you told me... 
sh- sh- hold, you, you told me before the show you would give me some straight lines that are, are clean, and we'd see what happens. Okay? I said I'll give it a chance. Okay, I'll give it a try. Are you ready to try it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Here's the straight lines. Jeff, what do you think of what do you think, Jeff, of Ronald Reagan? I think he's a great man. I think uh, yes, he is a great man. Any president can go on TV and go, Well, I knew about the Iranians arm deal, but I'm old. I forget. <laughs> That's a great man. That's a great man. Uh, possibly it's the uh, way you're reading them. Uh, Jeff, who do you admire more than anyone in this country right now? Don- sh- sh- next to what? Next to Wally? Next to you, Wally, I admire Don Regan. Don Regan? Yeah. Why? He's the man that hung up on Nancy. Oh. He hung up the phone on her. He put the phone down. Slate him out of here. What do you think? What do you think about? What do you think about? Jeff, what do you think of Dr. Ruth? Oh, Dr. Ruth. Well, I don't know. She makes me angry, Wally. Why any, is that? Six, any six-year-old any six-year-old German broad that gets laid more than I do. That makes me oh. angry. <laughs> And oh my gosh, Marco, the polar bears are so cute. Can you describe what we're seeing? That's an excellent experience for Mission Spring Adventure here at San Diego Zoo. And you can see our amazing ambassadors here showcasing all that amazing behavior. And we're going to be giving away tickets, so make sure you go to kdoc.tv for your chance to win.